Hey guys, welcome to Imminent Threat Solutions. Today we're going to be taking a look at our trauma kit lineup, which is part of our overall medical kits and accessories. What we've got today are a couple of different variations of our kits that we're going to be talking about. Again, these are just the trauma kits. Uh, we also make first aid kits, which we dubbed our boo-boo kits, so that's kind of a separate video. This is purely based on just the trauma aspect of our medical kits today. So we started out in 2010 manufacturing vacuum sealed trauma kits and putting together some of the best components out there which were based on the TCCC guidelines, which is the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care, not to be confused with the commercial company that's trademarked the name TCCC. So just be aware of that. Um, what we've got, like I said, is we started making these vacuum sealed trauma kits in a fat boy configuration, which we've dubbed that because that it's very easy to fit in a cargo pocket. So this is kind of a carryover from the military, which TCCC is all about. So what is the TCCC? That's the Tactical Combat Casualty Care Guidelines. So a military entity came together to establish guidelines on what would be the best practices in a, in a care under fire or a combat situation. So those same guidelines that have applied to how to treat a casualty or somebody medically have very, a very good crossover into the civilian market as well. So that's what we've used when we, when we pick our components, when we put our kits together, they're all based on that. So, as the TCCC has come out with new recommendations and those guidelines have been updated through the years, we've tried to update our kits to, to go right along with those guidelines as well. So fat boy configuration was our first one, fits into a cargo pocket really nicely, again a carryover from the kind of military days, but we've also built a pouch around that too. Then we moved into a tall boy configuration, you can kind of see the difference in size here. Um, same components, let me compare the right kits, so this is our basic kit in fat boy and tall boy. Um, same components, but vacuum packed in a different, different, uh, a different context, so they fit in different locations. So we still make pouches for both of these kits, but the important part of the, the tall boy configuration was to put something together that was taller rather than fatter, so hence the tall boy and fat boy nomenclature. Um, it was designed to fit in the same relative size space as a double mag pouch on a, on a chest rig or something like that too. So, um, and then we also came out with a pocket kit, we've, which we've dubbed our EDC kit. Um, basically, whereas the ETA kits, and ETA stands for Extremity Hemorrhage, Tension Pneumothorax, and Airway Obstruction. So those are the three leading preventable causes of death in the field according to the TCCC. Um, we also wanted to make a pocket kit though that was not, you're not carrying around all these huge components, you're carrying around just the basics. So the number one leading preventable cause of death in the field is extremity hemorrhage or bleeding out. So that's what the EDC kit is designed to help with. So that was our quick pocket kit that we put together. Um, it now includes a full size tourniquet. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the different components and we'll show them all laid out so you can kind of see what's in all these kits and we'll also walk through the different pouch configurations for these as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the EDC kit to start with. What we've got first is the pocket size vacuum sealed kit in itself and the kit in itself is, is vacuum sealed with a very heavy duty poly bag. Um, it's also got a slit in the back here that we've primed for opening. I can go ahead and open that up there just to show you guys what, we're, what we've got for the kit. So on the back side, um, you'll also find those tactical combat casualty care guidelines. So this is the first stage of tactical combat casualty care, which is care under fire. So this, this, these are the steps that the TCCC has come up with um, to, to utilize during a, uh, a situation where you're actually under fire. So those are always printed on the back with the see-through bags. It's very easy to see those even if the kit's still vacuum sealed. So, we've got the vacuum seal kit. So the components that are inside, we've got a pair of gloves. So this is a pair of nitrile gloves. These are non-latex that are rolled up inside of there. Um, again, with the EDC kit, we just pack the gloves loose so it's easy to, to get to the gloves um, when the kit is opened. Then we've got a full-size soft T-wide tourniquet. Um, and this is a COT triple C recommended tourniquet. So this is a full-size ready-to-go tourniquet. Um, it comes with these UV resistant rubber bands too, which um, is great if you're mounting the tourniquet in itself on a kit. And then you've got a pack of combat gauze. So combat gauze is the T -triple, one of the TCCC recommended uh, hemostatic agents. And what that looks like, you can see it's a pretty thin package when it's, uh, when it's together here, but you're actually getting quite a bit of gauze when you open that up. 
So what's great about the, uh, the newest generation of the quick clot combat gauze is that it's got an x-ray strip um, in this black package of LE gauze. They used to have a, a green package that was kind of a military law enforcement only package. Um, now they've gone and put the, and the only difference between those was the x-ray strip. So now the x-ray strip is in this black package which we include in all our kits. So combat gauze, this is the, uh, it's all impregnated with kaolin which is a hemostatic agent. And then this blue strip that runs through here is actually um, an x-ray detectable strip. So if you're packing this into a wound cavity, um, that's, it's detectable over an x-ray. So and then when it comes to the pouches for the EDC kit, what we've got here is a pouch to, to fit the vacuum sealed kit right in there. And each pouch is manufactured in the United States, as well as features a, uh, a loop field in the front here to fix with our medical patch, which comes with the, the slimline kit. Um, the benefit of the slimline pouch is not only that it can hold that, but it holds a plethora of other things too. Um, you can fit a, uh, a standalone tourniquet in there too, as well as a notebook and even some cell phones too. So it can be mounted either horizontally, so we've got a pass-through channel in the back of the slimline, so it can be mounted horizontally on a belt this way, or it can be mounted, I'm sorry, vertically on a belt this way, or horizontally this way. So that pass-through channel is all bar tacked in place, so you can also mount it to Molly as well. So you can use the included malice clips to weave this through your PALS webbing on Molly gear. So those are the pouches. It comes in black, multicam, and coyote. Um, the pouch or the kit actually comes with this slip cover too. This is included with every EDC kit, so you get a slip cover. Um, and basically this slip cover allows you to keep this into a, put this into a, a pocket, preferably your back pocket. That's where we recommend to carry this. But it kind of protects the vacuum seal too. These are pretty heavy duty bags and they're not going to, they're not going to puncture, but just in case, we've included the slip cover if you'd like in the additional protection of putting this in there. So that comes in your choice of either coyote or black. Okay, so first before we get into the contents of what's inside the vacuum sealed kits for the medical components, I wanted to briefly talk about the methodology and thought process behind our ETA trauma kit pouches. So these have been around for quite a few years now. I think we developed these back in 2010. Um, they've often been imitated but never duplicated, so keep that in mind when you're looking at pouches like this too. So the thought process behind this was, let's start with the Fat Boy since that's the first one we created. So we wanted a pouch that could be mounted to, to PALS webbing or to Molly, and we wanted something that was very quick to access too. So we created this pull handle and the zipper configuration with Zulu nylon gear, which gives us a nice pull down and easy access to the pouch. So within the pouch, um, we also include malice clips with each pouch, and that's our mounting device to the back. So real quick, as we were mentioning before, as I was mentioning before, so the Fat Boy configuration takes up three columns of PALs versus the two columns of PALs on a Tall Boy. So that's kind of the difference. You can visually see the, uh, the difference between the sizes there. So once the pouch is filleted open, you're able to put our vacuum sealed kit within the pouch and seal it back up or you can take the loose components out of the pouch and store them in the different configurations that we have here. So the, uh, the two channels on the outside wings of the pouch are great for um, the NPA and the needle. Um, this Molly chair or this channel here was designed just like our medical insert that we carry on ITS and that is to carry the other pieces of, of what's in the kit. So just a little bit on the, uh, the layout and methodology behind this. So, the Tall Boy is very similar to the Fat Boy. The only difference is that you, with the Tall Boy, we created this to uh, come with both the long mouse clips as well as the short mouse clips so that you could mount the Tall Boy in a horizontal configuration too. So by using these outside channels here, you can now mount this to the back of a war belt or what have you. So this is mountable both, both horizontal and vertically. So let's get into actually what's inside our vacuum sealed kits. Okay, so what you're looking at is the components in our advanced kit, and I want to talk through just the individual pieces of the, of the kits, and then we'll get into the specifics of each individual item as well. So we've got the quick clock gauze that I showed with the EDC kits, we've got a decompression needle, we've got a nasopharyngeal airway, 28 French, we've got Z-fold dressing, we've got a pair of nitrile gloves, 
We've got chest seals. We have an elastic bandage or an ace wrap. We have a four inch pressure dressing, which is the Israeli. We've got a casualty card as well as a pencil to fill out the card, um, as well as our contents list. So we've got the cards in both the basic and advanced. And again, the flip side has those care under fire instructions on them. So real quick, we've gone over the combat gauze. I already showed kind of the, uh, what that looks like. This is, uh, this is basically just a Z-fold dressing and that's just gauze. And this is what it looks like when it's not vacuum sealed. So again, you can see that that's a considerable difference. It comes in this easy to use package to dispense. Um, one of the problems initially um, when rolled gauze was used in kits a long time ago is that you know, you'd start to pack a wound with gauze and then you'd drop the gauze and the, you know, the rolled gauze would just go everywhere and get contaminated and you, wanna, you wouldn't want to put that contamination into a body cavity. So um, this is great because it's Z folded. So what that means is it's stacked in kind of a, a Z fold configuration like post-it notes. Um, so as you pull out the gauze from the package, um, it stays in this and even if you were to drop it, you've at least got some kind of protection against the elements. So, and then the nitrile gloves, we talked about those too. Um, this is a four inch ace wrap. So the only difference in ace wrap, is, the only difference in the tall boy and fat boy configurations is with the tall boy, uh, we went with a two inch ace wrap versus the four inch ace wrap. So that's the only difference in components that you'll see. Obviously when we get into the basic and advanced in a second, I'll show what the difference is there. But between the advanced kit in both the basic I'm sorry, between, in the advanced kit between both the fat boy and tall boy, the only difference is the size of the ace wrap. So then we've got the chest seal, and let me show you those real quick. So this is the vented version of the Halo chest seal. We've just upgraded all our kits to this. Uh, COTCCC is now recommended to include uh, the vented, a vented chest seal. So this basically comes with two. So you've got a vented seal and a non-vented seal. If you're familiar with chest seals, um, the vented seal still allows the, uh, basically allows the body cavity to still breathe. So if you had a sucking chest wound, um, that pleural space, when it fills up with air that it's intaking into the plural, plural space, um, it's allowed to vent that air. Um, before you could kind of burp a chest seal, which is just going to kind of peel back the edge if that was going on. Um, and the great thing about halos is that it included two, it's always included two, but even with the new vented, you still got the standard one too. Um, because if the you know, bullet passes through the body, you want to protect the, uh, the whole, the, the exit wound too. So that's why the uh, vented versus non-vented halo chest seal. So these are kind of the uh, consistency of like a fly paper. So super sticky. Um, can stick to a stick to blood and all that stuff too. So again, include two of those: one vented, one non-vented. And then we've got our uh, we've got our pressure dressing and four-inch pressure dressing, which we use the Israeli. Um, and what we do when we pack these into the kits is we remove them from this outer bag. Um, it's like Pepperidge Farms bread. You open it and it's still not open. To quote Mitch Hedberg. So this is the configuration we have them in when we pack them, and it's just a simple tear on this package to, to finish opening it the rest of the way, and you get something like this. So it's a very, it's a very large bandage. Um, the elastic on it is really heavy duty, which is one of the reasons we've stuck with the Israeli in our kits. And then we include the pencil, obviously, to fill out a casualty card. Um, this is just uh, for higher echelon care so they know exactly what's gone on with your patient. Uh, place to fill out vitals and all that stuff. Then we've got a 28 French adjustable NPA. These are very good quality NPAs. We don't sacrifice quality when it comes to components. Um, these are adjustable so um, based on different nasal cavities these are used for, uh, for airway obstructions. And then we've got our decompression needle so um, now that we have the vented halo seal um, hopefully not going to run in a situation where you need to decompress somebody, but if that plural space again fills up with air, um, if you've ever seen the uh, We the Kings movie with Mark Wahlberg, I think they go through this in the movie. But So this is a chest dart or a needle um, to decompress the plural space in the event of a sucking chest wound. So that's the components for the advanced kit. Um, so let's talk about the differences between the basic and advanced. So the basic kit is everything you see here. Let me go back to my basic card here. So it's everything you see here minus the needle and MPA. So we take those out in the basic kit and you're left with the components you see here. So only difference between basic and advanced. 
All right, guys, just wanted to show you a quick look at a couple of other accessories that we have for our trauma kit lineup before we close this out. Um, and then one thing I want to mention, too, is that the soft T wide tourniquet that was shown with the EDC kit is the only kit that it actually comes with. Uh, we have this as a quick add on in the shopping cart if you purchase any of our other trauma kits, and we'd highly recommend that you have a tourniquet if you're going to carry a trauma kit. So, again, soft T wide tourniquet. And we also have a, a great pair of shears. Um, shears are not a necessity when you're carrying a medical kit, but um, what's great about a good pair of uh, trauma shears is that you can cut off clothing or other apparel if you have to get to a wound. Um, and then a retractor. Um, the reason we carry this retractor is it interfaces really well with the, the pair of shears that we carry. So you can easily put this into trauma shears there. And you can unhook this girth hitch that around and now you've got your trauma kit or sorry your trauma shears retained on a retractor so you can put this through the needle here so this is a needle mount which is great it can punch through pals webbing or molly gear and you can retain that but then if you need to hand off the shears to someone you can quickly disengage that as well and have the shears ready but um, what I like is there's a couple of different mounting points within the handles of the shears too so you can mount those as well so that is a quick look at some of the accessories for our trauma kit lineup. Again, all the details for our trauma kits are available on the website, store.itstactical.com. Be sure to check out all the details. We've got photos, we've got more information, way more than I've covered in this video. So make sure you check that out as well. Thanks for watching.